Happy New Year. Welcome to 2019 and welcome back to Relative Time. Now that 2018 is behind us, I thought it'd be fun to look back at some of my favorite watches over the last year. And I reviewed 49 different watches, so it's kind of hard to narrow it down, but I'd say these are my top five. And when I say favorite, I don't necessarily mean the best watches of the year, but I think these are the more memorable ones, the ones that have really made an impression on me. So let's start at number five, which is a Vostok. Now I reviewed four Vostoks last year, but I only kept two of them. Now I gave the Commandeerski Classic to my nephew as a present, and I sold the GMT Commandeerski. I figured in the long run I'd rather have one of the K34s. Although I also recently saw this one, which I think is the same movement as the GMT Commandeerski, but in an Amphibia Neptune case. Now I wound up keeping both Amphibias, the Classic and the Amphibia with an F. But out of the two, I have to say that the Classic Amphibia is my favorite and is a number five on this list. Not only did it introduce me to the world of Vostok, but it helped get my feet wet with some light modding. It's become my travel, beater, and dive watch all in one. And I even had someone once ask me if it was a planet ocean. Not quite. Now it's because of this that it's gotten a little worn over this year, including a small scratch on the crystal that I can't seem to buff out. But in this case that's okay because well, that's what I bought the watch for. Although if it gets too bad, I guess I can always just replace the crystal. Now coming in at number four is the only quartz watch on this list. It's a rather oversized and a lot overpriced watch that's a little confused on whether it's a diver or a field. It was also built in Detroit with Swiss and imported parts. And it also has a dial that I just love. And it was also discontinued, so it was on clearance and I actually got it for a reasonable price. It's the Filson Mackinac. It has 200 meters of water resistance, a nice screw down crown, a little bit of a domed sapphire crystal, and a whole lot of loom. For whatever reason, I just love the dial layout and the syringe hands, and this has really become my go-to quartz watch when I just need to grab something and go, which means it also travels with me frequently, as I always like to have at least one quartz watch with me, just in case my auto runs out of power. Now number three is the only Chinese watch on this list, although I would like to mention the Starking AMO184. While it's not on this list, it was very interesting to see it go from complete obscurity to being covered by much larger channels over this last year. But my favorite Chinese watch, and coming in at number three, is the Cadison C8100, which I've nicknamed the Imperial. Now one of the problems with looking for watches on Gearbest and AliExpress, and particularly good watches that have, say, a Miyota movement in them, is that oftentimes they're dress watches. So it was really refreshing to find this one that's definitely not a dress watch and has more of a sporty appearance. I just love the complicated multi-layered dial here and the color scheme of the red, green, and black. And it also has a particularly good bracelet. In fact, it's the only Chinese watch I've had that I've continuously kept and worn on its stock bracelet. Now, it's a little rough around the edges and the loom could be better. It's okay, but not great by any means. But it was one of the few Chinese watches I've seen that really wasn't lacking anything. I never had one of those moments where I was scratching my head wondering, you know, why didn't they do this or why did they do this? And I'm still rather impressed with its accuracy, gaining only about a tenth of a second a day, which is completely unheard of. And I don't think they're all like that. I think that was just a fluke and I got something special. But this is also one of the more expensive Chinese watches that I think I've gotten, where the prices are usually ranging in the upper 80s. Which has caused me to wonder about some of the other higher-end watches on AliExpress and Gearbest, and even take a risk on one. Now, it'll be a while before I get around to reviewing this, but I just thought I'd show it off. I got this late last month off eBay secondhand, and it's a Flieger by San Martin. Now, it's a beautifully blue dial in a bronze case with a lot of patina already. It has a domed sapphire crystal, high beat movement, and super luminova. Now before we get to number two, I want to make a special mention. Now this didn't make the list, but it showed me that it was okay to take a risk on something that's a little different, maybe a little funky. And that's Swatch's System Navy, which I was initially a little hesitant about with its blue and silver color scheme, but it's one I quickly warmed up to. So number two also shares that odd silver and blue color scheme, and it's the Seiko Ice Monster. Now this industrial style design diver 
takes that odd factor and cranks it up to 11. It's a rather polarizing design, but it's one that I just love. Now it may just be a desk diver, but I think it's one of your best bang for your bucks when it comes to Seiko watches. And I think it also really challenges the idea that you need a Seiko SKX for everyday life. And while it looks fantastic on a variety of straps, I've kept mine on this blue Jetson by Barton. Coming in at number one is an Orient, and this really shouldn't surprise anyone who saw my last video. Now out of the four Orients I've reviewed this year, I've only kept one. Now the Orient Star Retrograde was nice and I liked it, but I really wasn't wearing it much and there wasn't much reason to keep a watch that expensive around. And while I really loved the Orient Defender, its lack of hacking and hand winding started to get to me, so I sold it. Although if they ever release a Generation 2 with hacking and hand winding, I'll definitely pick one up. And as for the Mako 2, well I actually just recently gave it away as a Christmas present to one of my best friends. Which leaves us with my Gen 2 version 2 Bambino as the most memorable watch this year. Now I just love its beautifully overcomplicated dial. I've said it before, but it's a watch that lets you be precise and look good while doing it. And it's a watch that proved to me that you really don't need to spend a lot of money to get a good looking elegant dress watch as well as it really showed me what Orient can do. I don't really wear a suit that often, so the Bambino at its price is perfect for me and has become my go-to dress watch. Now its biggest problem is its 21mm straps, and the stock strap isn't really that good. So when and if you do find a good one, I do suggest you pick it up, as a good strap can make a world of difference. Now out of the four Orients I reviewed, this is the one I kept. But I actually have three that I haven't shared with you, so consider this a preview on things to come. Now, I've had this for a good while now, probably about six months, maybe longer, and I've been meaning to review it multiple times, but it just kind of kept getting pushed further and further back on the list as I kept finding things that I thought were more interesting. Now, it's the Orient Symphony 2 with Sapphire Crystal. And at one point, I was even planning on doing a comparison between it and the Star King AMO 184, as I thought they were rather similar. But again, it kept getting pushed back. So hopefully, I get to this some point in the next few months. Now, back in September, I became interested in a line of Orient chronographs known as the Neo 70s. Now, these are kind of a retro 70s series of chronographs that you can only get in Japan. Now what's interesting about it is that not only is it a solar chronograph, but it's a solar chronograph with a sweeping second hand. Not to mention it has a rather cool dial. Now I was going to get the Panda version, but I saw this one and thought it was a little more interesting. And hopefully I'll get this one soon, probably sooner than the Symphony. And this is the last Orient, which I actually got Christmas Eve, and it's one of the new Orient divers but this is the one with the beautifully striking burgundy dial. Now many people are referring to this as the Mako 3, but according to Orient USA, that's not the name it's going to be going by, at least here in the States. So until it actually has an official name, I'm going to be referring to it as the Mako X. Now if all goes well, I should have the review of this done by next week, say Tuesday-ish. But in the meantime, if you can't wait, Bob over at Time to Go Travel actually did an unboxing of his version of this exact same model, so go check that out. Now in the meantime, let me know what your favorite watches were this year, not just on my channel, but you know, in general. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. This is going to be a great year.